The Sikh turban, also known as the Dastar, is a religious head covering worn by Sikh men and women as a sign of their faith and identity. In April 1699, Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th Guru of the Sikh religion, formed the Khalsa, a brother and sisterhood of baptized Sikhs. During the initiation of the Khalsa, the turban was prevalent in society as a sign of royalty. It represented the higher caste. Guru Gobind Singh teared down the system by granting everyone an equal right to wear one and the turban was no longer seen as a status symbol. It became a way of expressing unity and equality among fellow Sikhs. The turban is an important part of Sikh culture, symbolising their faith, courage and commitment to uphold justice and defend the rights of all. However, I found that despite its cultural and religious significance, Sikh turbans have been a target of discrimination and prejudice, particularly in Western countries where they are often misunderstood and viewed as a symbol of terrorism or extremism. When researching, I found that discrimination against Sikh turbans can take many forms, including hate crimes, employment discrimination and societal stigmatisation. According to the Sikh Federation, Sikhs have faced a 70% increase in hate crimes between 2015 and 2019 in the UK. This increase was partly due to the Brexit referendum, which started in June 2016, followed by Donald Trump's rise in power in 2017 and Boris Johnson being elected for Prime Minister in 2019. These political events and individuals represented nationalist agendas and seem to encourage openly expressed prejudices against ethnic minorities. As a Sikh myself, and someone who has been surrounded by Sikhs wearing turbans my whole life, but not truly understanding the meaning of it or the hardships my community has had to face, I decided to go on a journey to identify and educate myself on how and why the turban has been viewed negatively and whether this is an issue that can be worked on. To start my journey, I've decided to visit my uncle Amajit, who was in the minority of Sikh men who grew up in East London in the 1970s, and therefore is someone who I believe will have some interesting stories and views on this topic. So, have you ever experienced any racial hate, physical attacks or discrimination? because of your turban, oh, yeah, how did it yeah. affect you? Oh, I mean, again, growing up in the 70s in East London, yeah, it was a very, very, and especially, I mean, I went to predominantly white schools. Yeah. There weren't that many uh, people of colour, let alone Indians, let alone Sikhs, yeah, who, who had like the, maybe the two or three in the school. Yeah. Mm. And so, yeah, you, you were different, you were like, you know, you had all the name calling, all the rest of it. But sometimes what it is, um, <laughs> because you are that different, yeah, yeah uh, it makes you a little bit special as well. Unique. Yeah. 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 And, and even like the people who used to take, make fun and take the piss and all the rest of it, now, when I do sort of bump into them every now and again, um, there is a lot of affection there. And you realise, because what it is, someone's calling you that, making fun of you, mm. um, because kids will be kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you look at the intent. Because if you've grown up with prejudice, you know what prejudice is and what it isn't. When somebody says something, because culturally they're brought up that, up that way, and they don't really know anything else, mm. but there's no ill intention. Yeah. And this is something which I'm finding is a, a little bit, difficult in this woke generation that we have it's all well and fine to be politically correct but then you're condemning people whose intention isn't to be nasty or or, or ill-willed in any way they just haven't got the same upbringing yeah and you're just cancelling them out there's something very wrong there yeah oh but, but the other thing is being a target yeah then you have to do something about it yeah so uh, that was one of the driving things. That's why I, I learned martial art. Yeah, I would have learned a lot younger had I had the money, but I didn't have any money. And as soon as uh, uh, I started getting a little bit, then I started training. 
mm. and uh, I've been training ever since actually. Yeah. So yeah, I learned Kung Fu for many mm. years yeah. and I've taught it for many years. Yeah. So it's something valuable and I suppose if I hadn't had that difficulty then perhaps I wouldn't have done it but because I did it was a driving force. So when you've got people with prejudice it's like yeah you challenge them on it what are you going to do yeah because it's only by people being in contact with people or that thing which they don't like or disrespect eventually some kind of respect can form yeah but if you avoid it all the time and you never uh, mix or mingle mm. then all they know is they see you as the other and that's they don't know you do you think year. there's been like a specific period where it was really bad and 9 -11. around one year before i was born on september the 11th 2001 the most shocking incident occurred in modern western history 9-11 9-11 was a terrorist attack on the United States of America. The attacks resulted in the deaths of nearly 3,000 people. These attacks were perpetrated by a terrorist group known as Al-Qaeda, led by Osama bin Laden. Um, but I suppose you had, what's his name, Osama bin Laden. All of those people, Afghanis, because they sometimes wear turbans as well. Mm -hmm. They do, yeah. Um, and, though, and so... Again, ignorance of education, especially in the West, yeah. Um, and yeah, so yeah. You, 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 know, you get called a Sama, you get called this, you got called that, yeah. Uh, and again, all it is, what it is. Did that impact you at all? Um, not really. You get called things every now and again, Osama or this or Bin Laden, yeah. But what, what can you do, yeah? You can sit there and educate someone who's like driving past in the car swearing at you. So what are you going to do? Um, the thing is, what, what's, when, you've, when you've grown up, because I grew up in the 70s, there was a lot of racism then, yeah? Yeah. Um, and again, like politicians do now, they did then, oh, people feel like we're being, uh, what's the word she used, Thatcher. Uh, kind of swarmed or overwhelmed or whatever it was it was trigger language mm. yeah and um, anyway so yeah you do have that um, and people I didn't realize how much the media does influence you but I became very aware of it um, in the 80s before and after um, 84 the attack on uh, Amanda Saeb yeah and uh, I thought they were saying this and now they're saying this so and what it is so who do you trust what do you trust it's difficult to yeah, yeah? so I'd experienced prejudice um, growing up in in East London yeah um, most of my life but what you find is not everybody is most people actually aren't yeah, and that's the thing. And they Most get people influenced by the media. aren't. Well, they get influenced by media or get influenced by Others. family and backgrounds, so depending on what time you're talking about, 70s, you know, all yeah. the media, you know. But as, as people get to know people, then you see uh, that they, you're just like me. Yeah, you might look a bit different. So, yeah. After having that interview with Uncle G, it made me reflect on how far we've actually come as a community and has given me a different perspective as he suggests that people are now more open to difference. For my second day, I've decided to go to a Vasaki event, which is held every April in London. Vasaki is the biggest event in the Sikh calendar and celebrates Sikh heritage and the birth of the Khalsa. Seeing everyone coming together and even seeing people from other cultures exploring the Sikh religion allowed me to identify how far society has actually come in terms of embracing other people's religions and the celebration of diversity in the UK. There was also a marquee organised by the Chodikala Turban Tying Academy 
who are the UK's first ever dedicated team of Sikh volunteers to raise awareness and teach people all styles of the Sikh turban. This allowed anyone to have their hair tied into a turban to symbolise and celebrate the faith. Even seeing people from other ethnicities asked to have the turban tied was amazing to see and showed me that there is a lot of progress being made in terms of the stigma that had been created around the turban by others. For my last day of filming, I decided to visit my uncle Rishi, who I believe will have a lot to discuss with me on how the turban has led to discrimination and hate from others within society. I would also like to question him about his experiences as a turban Sikh growing up in the UK. So do you think some people within society hold a negative perception of the turban and if so, why? So I think people do, Simran. I think they do have a negative impression of the turban. Um, why? Many reasons, but I think if you break it down, it's because of fear. Yeah. And it's because it's, it's, it's just fear of the unknown. And they see something, they see something on the media, they see something that's a bit scary, the mm. media put a bit of an impression on thing, yeah. things, and then that's it, it's in your perception then. If you see something negative or someone wearing a turban on, on, on screen, then all of a sudden you're vilified, and then you're a, you're a scapegoat, you're a target. And this is things that we've all experienced and seen. Yeah. Misidentity, other things like that, where people see someone with a turban and think actually you're, you're, that, that's who you belong to, when we don't, it's a, it's a completely different community, but even then it's probably not acceptable. But if you break it down, it's fear. Are there any factors you believe has led to an increase in hate crimes against Sikhs with turbans? So it all depends on what's happening in current affairs. It happens on what's happening around mm. um, obvious ones, 9-11, yeah, 7-7, obvious factors. 7-7. Seven, seven. This was a series of coordinated terrorist attacks that occurred in London on the 7th of July 2005. The attacks consisted of four suicide bombings, targeting civilians using the public transportation system during rush hour. The attacks were carried out by four homegrown terrorists, who were later found to have connections to extremist groups who were associated with Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. In those times you saw a real increase in hate crime. Um, in fact, I think after 7-7, I mean, the the first attack that happened was on our local Gurdwara, our local temple, mm. where there was a petrol bombing uh, on our local Gurdwara on the night of 7-7. And just because they identified us as wearing turbans, they thought we belonged to a certain faith that might have been responsible for the bombings, etc. And that's it. And we were targeted. Yeah. And we were all there at the time when these guys were trying to trying to attack. Yeah, I think it was mainly with like 9-11 as well. 9-11 was big. Bin Laden. We got Osama bin Laden on TV and other people like that, and you know, and that was a difficult time. Mm. Yeah, and I was, I just started, to, I was, I just started uni then. Oh wow. Yeah, and um, I remember it was really tense because, like, we, I was going to university with my instruments and all of that, so I have a lot of different things that look a bit weird because my instruments are Indian, you know, classical instruments, yeah. so the big boxes and <laughs> things, like, and you're carrying them all, and you're all on the train, and you could just see see the looks as you get on the train. Um, wow. And it used to work a couple of ways, Simran, because like um, either people will say completely out of your way, so it means you get the whole carriage to yourself, which, <laughs> which is brilliant, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or people will actually really look at you with a lot of suspicion and just a lot of, you know, and then you get, you'll get the comments out, oh, you know, are you going to blow yourself up or you know, all those sort of things, and you'd hear that quite often. Wow. So how did that make you feel then? How did that make me feel? So yeah. in, 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 initially, it did make me feel quite angry. Mm. Um, but and because it was a mistaken identity thing, it wasn't acceptable even if it wasn't a mistaken identity. Um, and it was just a lack of ignorance and fear and, and that people in people's minds. And I remember traveling on the day of seven seven, um, on the train and on the day after that to get back to Birmingham for uni. And um, again, just the suspicion, the look, the looks, the the comments. You know, quite often, I was shouted called Bin Laden on the street. You know. Or so you 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 you're chased down the road, you know all the, all those things, but you, you became part and parcel of what you got used to, um, and you do feel a bit angry, but then you realise actually, you know what, it's just fear at the end of the day. These people have got fear, so don't rise yeah. to that anger, don't give into that anger. 
I was going to ask how do you feel about people who do carry out these attacks, but, I mean, you've made it clear, like, it's their lack of knowledge that they don't know about, like, it's the, the fear you are saying. Yeah, so the thing, the thing is, what I've, what I've done, and I've done this in the workplace as well quite a bit, that the only way you can really make a change is if you actually sit down and you actually educate people. Yeah. And there are circumstances where people are just not going to engage with you whatsoever, and you've got to understand that they're not going to engage. Mm. Um, and within that, what I used to do sometimes is not really go into aggression, but try and find a way to talk my way out of it. Um, you know, get it out of it with a bit of humour. Um, you know, um, somehow, somehow, just changing the focus of the conversation. But the thing is, if you're when you're battling someone's ignorance and stuff like that, you have to find a way to take their the ignorance away and that's not necessarily with with aggression it's having a conversation with them explaining it mm. so for example if if you're you know when the problems are happening in schools we were going to schools we're doing education piece in the school saying look this is what the turban is do a turban that's tying really yeah. yeah do a turban tying thing with them so they can see it on the streets as well we've done talked about what the faith is giving them an example of what this is what turban tying is this is what it's like when I went into the workplace, into my workplace, and I knew that I was the only person who looked the way I looked, the first Sikh person that probably a lot of them have ever seen and they've, or even spoken to, uh, and I'm a solicitor, so it's a law firm, uh, but yeah, they and but it was a, I should tell you something funny, so in this law firm, so, I mean, we, well, it's not funny, but we, we all had a, we, we, we were quite close to each other, we were good friends with each other, uh, and one of them, one of my co-colleagues as a, as a prank went and told the security guard that I was investigated for terrorism charges right oh as, as, you, as you would right all young guys this is my first law firm that security guard took it so seriously that he basically cornered me every single time I'd come in the in into the building and he wanted to check my bags and want to check me down before I'd wow. actually walk in that's the type of things that I had to deal with it was those it was those conscious biases those prejudices that even though it was a prank it was a joke which I accept it as a joke because I know who done it, but mm. if that wasn't that situation, if someone else like me walked in and I got frisked like that, you know, it would have been a bit of a problem, yeah. right? And so, so there's some of the things that, we, that I saw in that. But anyway, in that workplace, what I did um, is just to remove the fear, that fear element is like I showed them how to tie my turban, I showed them my hair, um, you know, once you know, and so they got an idea about a talk about openly about the Sikh faith. The other thing is, don't be apologetic. I mean, be proud of who you are. Yeah. And I'd always speak about the Sikh faith because it's a part of me. Yeah, I feel like educating people is really important, especially with you going into schools and all of that. Like, just showing the kids that yeah, this is a real person, and like you shouldn't judge someone just based on the fact that they wear a turban or this or that. It came to a point that I kept on getting questions like, oh, do you know where Bin Laden is? Or they would always say, do you know where Bin Laden is? Wow. So <laughs> it came to a point where I actually got a T-shirt printed. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I don't know if you remember this. I got a T-shirt print- printed saying, no, I don't know where Bin Laden is. <laughs> <laughs> and I literally just wear it on the train. It's the fact that you can humorise it. <laughs> so I I'd, wear it, I'd wear it. And people will read it, they'll smirk, but they'll get the message. Mm. they'll get the message to say oh, all right yeah i understand what you're saying and that's how i kind of dealt with it because i made it my mission that i need to educate people here yeah. but i'm not going to get into that confrontation yeah and if i do that it removes the fear of it because i was like also very conscious i've got all these instruments i've got all these things but i'm going to sit on the train like no i don't know where bin laden is um so you know just don't ask me basically <laughs> i'm so fed up with this conversation yeah it's good that you stand up to it in like a positive way and not just yeah. fighting back in a bad way yeah yeah um and also do you feel like the government are doing their job to highlight this issue like do you think they are responding adequately to this issue or um it's difficult really because there's never enough that's done Mm. yeah it's never you're never doing enough yeah um i don't think they take it seriously yeah yeah, I think the thing I don't think they realise that this is a particular issue and that this is seriously. And I think the government through its various agencies, so you know the police force, the the planning commissions, to what level are you taking it really? Mm. Yeah, I don't think there's an appreciation about how much of a problem this is and how it actually affects you. But also, it's more than that. It's 
it's not just name calling it's not just all of that it's not just accepting it's the psychological impact that these this has yeah. on a community um it's the ability that these these people who have turbans or whatever and they're subjected to that all the time then lose their self-worth and they 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 can't associate themselves with that culture and then they can't associate themselves with the dominant culture either and so they're kind of not sure where they sit mm. so it's like what I was going what I, was, I started off with is like the Punjabi boys in school who didn't have a turban yeah. or they cut their hair and all that is because they couldn't they couldn't associated themselves with that culture but they were trying to fit into something that they weren't as well and still not accepted yeah so it's 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 one of and or there'll be what i also used to find is is that people will kind of get a bit a bit apologetic about their appearance really? so apologetic meaning you you're trying to determine it in a different way or you're you know or you try and hide the fact that you know this is who you are and you know, and it's probably more so just to avoid them being a target of these kind of things, right? But perhaps, but that is a big factor. But, mm. they, but like I said, if every person is going to be racist, they're going to be racist anyway, right? Mm. And in more, it then speaks about how actually now they become so insecure about it because they don't actually know who they are. Yeah. Because they've been subjected to all this name calling, these, these verbal abuse, so because they've actually feared that they're going to be attacked on the streets and stuff because around here we've grown up with Stephen Lawrence and we've grown up with Rohit Dougal and people like that this is in our generation where we grew up this is what was happening on the street yeah. and people thought it was totally acceptable to to come and beat you up or chase you or do that because the police weren't going to do anything about it and so there's times of, and I wasn't the best runner because I'm asthmatic and but there's times you've had to run and you're literally running for your life because you're thinking what you know what's going to happen right um, and this is not late at night. This is just coming in from school, yeah. Mm. And um, and that has an effect on someone. And like, you have to be really strong willed. And luckily, I was. Um, I am, yeah. But yeah. it's but I saw other people who it really affected them. They always because they said, "Look, I fear that I'm going to be a target all the time. Mm. I'm always called something. I'm always this, and I just want to get rid of that. I don't want to. I don't want to stand out anymore. I don't want to look like this anymore because they couldn't relate to it. Yeah. I feel like it's especially for young boys at school, like it really does have a psychological impact on them. Like, I always see like these articles on social media where it's like, oh, he got attacked because of his vodka and stuff, and it's not really being highlighted enough, like, in the media. And yeah, I think that's just due to the lack of education as well. It's yeah, you do you do say that with the kids. It is lack of education, but it also is because people just don't understand the effect that that actually does. Mm. For then anybody else is like just pulling someone's hat off. It's not a hat to us, yeah. Yeah. It's a really part and parcel of who we are. It's our identity. Yeah. It's 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 no different to our blood that flows through our sort of through you know our body. It's exactly that. It's who we are. Many people have given their lives just for the sake of this turban over the mm. years. You know, and it it it's ingrained in our fabric and what 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 we do. It makes us who we are. So then, when you do see something like that with some of the kids that that we've seen and have been attacked, um, it is very very upsetting. And then seeing how, um, it's taken very very trivially or very lightly is also very very upsetting. Yeah. So, why is your turban so important to you, individually? Well, for me, individually, it's, one, it's a part of my faith. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, it is who I am. Yeah. It's my identity. Mm. And what I find personally is because I've got my turban, because I look the way I am, it's actually put me in even higher esteem in my working life, in my in my, in my my personal life, my professional life. People, I stand out. People know who I am. I'm the only Sikh in my workplace. Mm. Um, I'm the only Sikh in doing what I do, you know, looking the way I am. And um, and immediately people are coming to flock to me because they know who I am, and they wouldn't. I would have just been another person in a, in a crowd, yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, so I work. I work for an NHS department now, uh, as a solicitor for the in, in an NHS department, uh, where I'm managing a team of lawyers and managing a team of solicitors, um, and literally, I I feel my faith, my image, my my perception is what has allowed me to be successful in my role yeah uh, it be- and it gives me that self-worth it gives me that self-confidence and if i didn't have that i stand up i know that i'm a sikh i'm a sing walking on the road, uh, road as a sing anybody with a turban with a beard is known as a sing uh, which means lion so mm. you've got the bravery the courage of a lion 
So after speaking to my uncles and learning more about the importance of the turban as well as the hardships they've had to face, I feel like it's really opened my eyes in terms of how unaware I was that this is an issue. However, I do feel like today more than ever, people are becoming more comfortable with it. They're more comfortable with difference. And so there's definitely improvement being made. And like my uncle Amadjit said that as we start to break down barriers and people begin to see who the Sikh community are, they start to realize that, you know, you're just like me and those preconceived thoughts start to disappear. So I feel like there's always going to be people in society who may not approve of one's culture or their image. However, as time goes on, people are hopefully becoming aware of their own prejudices against others, whether that's through self-awareness or education or just meeting new people. And hopefully the people carrying out these horrible attacks and acts of discrimination begin to see that the turban shouldn't be viewed as a negative emblem. The turban is something that shows our strength and commitment to our religion. Our faith's fundamental tenet is to serve all of humanity without prejudice.